to the paediatrician, said that Oliver's established enough now to give him a diagnosis of level three autism spectrum disorder. So it is the most high needs autism can be. He couldn't be any more autistic. It's who he is through and through, and that's the diagnosis that we are living with every day. There's not one single person with autism that's the same blueprint as the other. Ollie's on his own unique journey, but I can tell that he sees the world through a very different lens than we do. So how's your day, Mum? My day was good, thanks, Willsey. So Ollie and our family have a really rich, busy life. Can I push him on the swing, buddy, for me? OK. William's a beautiful, patient and caring big brother to Ollie and it helps me because my main role the last six years has been Ollie's full-time carer. Say another Not word, Ollie. and you've got to... You Ollie is such a happy, joyful little boy, and there is so much joy to be had in parenting him every day. Our days are, for the most part, really, really joyous. And I think people, when they find out he can't speak, they just... It's like the be-all and end-all. Ollie's form of autism, I've come to understand that he is sensing everything that we perhaps can filter out and it's penetrating in on a much more intense level. Like the plane overhead or the birds chirping outside or the car on the road. I feel like that's all coming in at Ollie at the same force. As well as having ASD, Ollie has Pika, which is an intense desire to consume abnormal items. What do you do with those? No, not, not in your mouth. You spit it out? Soil, paint flakes, ashes, leaves, grass. A lot of the time I won't eat my cooking and that's, <laughs> you know, I think, oh, my child's just eaten a big old handful of sand and half the mud puddles out there and a few leaves. But Enu doesn't want a bar of my bolognese. Amazing. Thank you, Mum. It is a constant challenge to try and keep that intense need for oral feedback and that sensory seeking around his mouth satisfied, but also keeping him safe. <laughs> Eating the bubbles. <gasps> Ollie is five and a half now, and this whole journey began when he was around 15 months. Everything was really typical. He was ahead of the pack, if anything. He had some vocabulary around seven months old. We had a mama and a dada. You said dada? <gasps> dada. Dada. Yes! <laughs> By about 15 months, he had sort of 40 words or sounds that he'd drawn together, which is quite a lot. Mama. And then Ollie just started to withdraw into himself. It felt like watching someone turn a dimmer switch down on your child. All those skills he developed began to fade away. Guy and I went on holiday for a couple of weeks and he was just totally withdrawn. He wouldn't answer his name and he wouldn't look at me and it, it was like he couldn't hear me. And I said to Georgia, I'm really worried about Ollie. I initially thought it was because my marriage to both William and Oliver's dad had ended. And so I think there was a small part of me that wanted to think perhaps it was the change in our relationship. But then it became pretty obvious that it was too many things that were changing with Ollie. And it was... Like, OK, this is something that's happening to my child. We're, we're experiencing this, and this is real. So it was hard, cos it was losing a child we knew, and he became a different child. And I knew it was going to be a very hard road for Georgia, and all you want for your child is an easy road. There was a real process of understanding that 
the Ollie that we knew wasn't coming back. It was getting my head around, OK, this is going to be a very different journey than I had imagined. This is going to be a very different family than I had planned. You quickly learn when you have a child like Ollie that you need to take each day as it comes. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of personal anxiety on the beginning of this journey of what if this life and this world isn't fun for Ollie? What if he never can go to preschool? What if he can never leave me? Or what if no one else can care for him that's not me? And I think I've taken it one step at a time. And the first big step was getting him into the Champion Centre. Music time. La, 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 la. Ollie has been going to the Champion Centre since he was two. He has access to music therapists, play therapists, early intervention therapists, child psychologists. Galloping on a horse today. Many of our children who have disrupted development, it's a very calming space and this is a place he can come and support his regulatory state and then move off and perhaps do something else that's a little bit more challenging. Definitely a bit calmer now he's having a swing. Mm. I think when Ollie first started here, one of the first ways we could engage him and keep him regulated was to swing, wasn't it? While he was being rocked and swung in that movement, that contained him as it would a young infant so that he could then look at Georgia and we could re-engage. I can give you a big swing. Go! Now Ollie's in the readiness for school program, getting him ready for what a school session might look like because Ollie loves to jump and to swing and to play, so school's going to be a bit of an adjustment. And so the next big question is, what will school look like for him? Because in New Zealand, he will legally have to be in school by age six. Homeschooling, correspondence schooling, specialist schooling, or mainstream schooling. I've considered all of the options for Ollie, and I believe that specialist schooling would be the right environment for him. So this is Alan Vow, Ollie's local specialist school and um, this is where I'm hoping for him to get a place for the beginning of 2022. And it just gives Ollie the best chance of thriving in an educational environment. This week is the week that they are having their intake meeting for the eight new entrance places. And if we don't receive a place for Oliver at the school, then it will be homeschooling with me as his educational facilitator. And that feels like a tremendous weight on my shoulders because I know I'm not the best person to provide that service for Ollie and I know places like this are the right place for him to be. Routine's really important in Ollie's life that helps give him some certainty and structure and reliability around his week. And we've woven things into his week that engage him and help draw him out of himself. So Monday, Ollie goes to his kid's first preschool. Then he goes with two early intervention educators. Ollie. Ollie. What Carol got? Oh, two babies. They give him that one-on-one -on -one supervision so he's safe and things aren't going in the mouth all the time and there is safe scaffolding around his play with other children. Starting with a child at three, you're part of their journey for such a long time. The exciting part is that we get to grow with them and then when they're either five or six, their journey is gearing towards school. In Ollie's situation, we're actually just trying to encourage his communication. Do you want more soon? Good boy. Do you want more swing? Or He's a very different Ollie today to who joined us. Ollie wouldn't have settled. Ollie would have become quite distressed. He possibly would have kicked out. Thanks, Fred. Oh. Oh. Swag. 
that over time that's been the most important role that we've been facilitating is to actually to help him towards regulation. Ready? And one. The picker thing, Ollie initially would have arrived at kindy, would have gone to the sand pit, and the sand would have literally got all gone into his mouth. Today, Ollie joined me at the Play-Doh table and had a few pieces in there. Time for Carol. Time. Often you can ask Ollie to return that and he'll often pop it back out. So that's where the Chewies come on board. They're really important, being able to control what actually does go into his mouth. And actually, you know, I do actually want to chew on something, so this might work better than that. But the exciting thing for us now is that Ollie will actually go and he will go and do that himself. He will go and swap out Chewies. And we might need a drink. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Look, I'm thinking, yeah, let's go and get something to eat. All right, let's go. Let's find your lunchbox. Come on, let's go. Let's go find your lunchbox. Once a week, we do hydrotherapy at the Burwood Therapy Pool. And it's such a small group of people that come along from the Champion Centre to that particular session. Ollie gets the joy of being in a big pool, but not the anxiety and all the uncertainty and unpredictability of the general public being there and turning up. Big jump! Big jump! Go! You can do it! Where I am today with Ollie is very different to where I was at four years ago. It just felt like I had no idea how to parent my child. <laughs> Always felt Ollie's emotions so acutely. So if Ollie's distressed or anxious, I feel that way too because I'm experiencing it all through him and for him. And so I wanted to keep it all together for everybody. So I had that choking feeling in the back of my throat when you feel like you're trying to repress a scream. <laughs> Yeah, like a scream in a teacup, you know what I mean? Like that, that feeling of just trying to keep it all down, push it all down, because if it all comes out, it's, it's not going to be pretty. You see Georgia struggling from time to time, and that upsets us immensely too, doesn't it, darling? Oh, she, oh she's incredible. She's just blown me away. Oh, she is incredible, darling. She's, yeah. she's so incredible. And Georgia will break down to me sometimes and say, you know, it's really hard. She comes to us a lot for support, so which, uh, which is the right place to come, isn't it, Yeah. I feel like I have a lot of tools in my kit set now, so I feel a lot more empowered as his parent, and I don't feel so completely lost in this, in this huge sea of possibilities when parenting him. You're going to go to Daddy's house. Dad is here to see you. Ollie, Ollie. look. Ollie. It's hey, Matt. Hi. How are you doing? Is he Daddy? Here he comes. Here he comes. I've always loved to perform, and I've always had an affinity for dressing up and assuming roles. And that form of escapism that I get through acting and performing is even more precious now being Ollie's mum because that takes up so much of myself. Hey, we'll see you in the morning. Yep, have, a good, have a good night. It also feels like time off as well at the same time. Hey, buddy, have a good night with Dad. Yep. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a kiss. She's been a performer since the day she was born. And she's very loyal to a close group of friends she's oh. got, isn't she? Her loyalty is just second to none, and that's why she's got such an incredible group of friends. You know, we've been together, what, eight, eight nine years now? I so, And we all, been... we all knew each other before the Starlet. But it's more than a, a singing group, more than a really small business. We're just yeah. four friends doing what we love and coming together, and yeah. um, every time we book a gig, it's like, oh, Wow, someone might pay us money to do what we love so much, you know? Like. The fun part of this as well is it is just a total collaboration because we all come up with ideas of what songs we want to do. Hard to believe we get paid for it, really. <laughs> I'm lucky to have this one. <laughs> She's one of those friends, and all the starlets are, really. She is the same person that I met years and years ago, and I saw her as a mum with her first son, and then with Ollie as well. 
and realising and understanding how huge this is and her whole world was changing from that moment on. And through that, that's probably... Oh, I'm going to get teary. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> probably from that moment, that is the biggest growth that I've seen in Georgia because not only is she a beautiful soul and a beautiful, beautiful person and an amazing mum, but I saw her take on something that I would have perceived as bigger than I could deal with. Bigger than a lot of people would think that they can deal with. It's so nice. <laughs> well, we're praying Ollie gets into Ellen Vale for Georgia. Maybe start writing again or, or do yeah. a bit more acting or yeah. even get a job. Whatever she wants to do, it will just give her another dimension in her life which will be very empowering for her. I just absolutely love cricket. It is my favourite thing to do. My dad introduced it to me when I was two and I just fell in love with it. Some things that I find hard about being Ollie's brother is that I can't really play with him because, of course, he can't talk. The things that I love the most about Ollie is that he is so patient with us and we can connect with him in loads of different ways, which is just absolutely amazing. I have carers come over and look after Ollie and it's a fantastic opportunity to make time for William to do special things that are based around William's interests. When you have a sibling with extra needs, they can be very absorbing and they can take a lot of people's attention and focus. It's important for Ross, William's father and I, to make time just for William to make him feel like he's still very important to us and very much a priority in our lives. Late cut, was he? When William was little, having been a typical child who went off to preschool at this age and school at this age. But with Ollie, every part of our journey has been so untypical. When your child turns five, you get the opportunity to send your child off to school and you get that wonderful experience of letting them go just a little bit and giving them that little bit of independence. And I really just for our family would like a step in this journey to be kind of what everyone else gets to have. So the wait to find out if Ollie's got a place in school has felt pretty interminable. You just do not know what that call is going to be and you do not know if there's going to be a space for your child. And so the Intake meeting was last week, and so Ollie's service manager will let us know if we've been successful in getting him a, a place in that new entrance class. What it would mean for me personally is that after six years of being Ollie's full time carer and being the one who facilitates all his therapy and early intervention, that a team will take that weight off my shoulders. Darling, <laughs> the little man. You've had a haircut. You look so handsome. There you go. The, this journey has taught me one thing. It's that Ollie has been the greatest free pass in terms of we never have to keep up with the Joneses ever again because we are never going to be on the same journey as your average New Zealand family. It's all in our own space, in our own time, in our own trajectory, and it's really freeing. This is Ollie's awesome T-shirt, and, and the reason I, I love it is that it has the word takifatanga on the front, which is a Māori word for autism, and it translates to in my own time and space, which I think is a pretty perfect way to encapsulate what autism means to us as a family. One of my friends once said to me, watching Ollie play with a dandelion in the wind, I really actually envy Ollie. He's just so happy 
right now. He's just so in the moment. He is the epitome of mindfulness because he's so absorbed in what he's doing and what he's feeling and what he's experiencing that there is no greater zen than Ollie right now. I've had to learn that if we need to lay down on the grass and stroke the dandelions for two hours, well, that's a great afternoon spent. It's a completely different way of thinking and being, but it is so raw and organic and authentic, and I have touched things and smelt things and felt things and experienced things that I never would have not being Ollie's mum. We just so in awe of Georgia and the amazing mum she is to William and Ollie. But she doesn't see herself as being incredible, she just sees herself as being a mum, but we can yeah. stand back and from a different perspective just be blown away by the strength of her character and it's not a journey I would ever have thought she'd go on. So success looks really differently now than it did before I became Ollie's mum. I imagined being on Shorten Street and kind of living my best life. But now achievement looks like Ollie having a great day, our family being happy and healthy and being full of love. And the way that we feel with each other is the real success. We'll take a good break, have a water, maybe after this. Your buzzing messages. Yeah, my phone's been buzzing, sorry. Um, that was just a call from the service manager letting us know that Ollie has a place at Allenvale for next year. So, he's in. He's going to be a big school boy. You have to get a new backpack. <laughs>